Now, on which side does the water fall? In equation number three, we're seeing the water is on the right hand side. Now, where does it fall in relation to the desired equation? It appears on the same side. It appears on the right hand side. What that means is that we will maintain the order of equation number three as is, and so it will not be reversed. And so let us rewrite it as it is. So we have H2, hydrogen gas, reacting with oxygen, and this is 0 0.5 mole of oxygen gas, or half of a mole. and it reacts to form H2O. Now because the order of the reaction is not reversed but it is maintained, it means that the sign on its enthalpy will remain negative. So it will be minus 200 42 kilojoules per mole. Now, in equation number three, we have one mole of water being produced. But let's look in the desired equation how many moles of water we should have. We should have four moles of water. And so, what we're going to have to do is multiply everything within the equation that we have written by 4. And so 4 times 1 mole of hydrogen gas, this will give us 4 moles. And 4 times 0 0.5, 4 times 0 0.5 is actually 2. So we're going to have to erase this 0 0.5 and replace it with 2. And so 2 should be here. 1 times 4 in the case of the water molecules here, will give us four. And that's the desired number of moles of water which is um, required. When we look back on equation number three, this one mole of water here that is being produced, it requires minus 242 kilojoules of energy. But over here, we are producing actually now four moles of water. So therefore, we are going to require four times the amount of energy required for the production of one mole. And so this needs to be multiplied also by four to reflect the energy required for the formation of those four molecules of H2O. Now let us add all three equations and see if we get our desired equation. But before we add them, let us eliminate any spectator species and remember that spectator species are species that appear on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side so any species that appears on the left and, and can also be seen on the right is considered a spectator species and can be eliminated now let us move from equation to equation to see if we can identify any spectator species Based on equation number one, the methane is only found in equation number one. We are not seeing it, not the methane, propane, my apologies. Propane is seen in equation number one. We are not seeing any propane in any of the other three equations. Carbon. Carbon is seen here on the right hand side in equation number one. And in equation number two, we are also seeing carbon. And in this, in this case, carbon is found on the left. So here, carbon appears both on the left and on the right. And so we can eliminate carbon. Okay. It's a species appearing on opposite side of the equations. So carbon can be eliminated as a spectator species. Hydrogen. In equation number one, we're seeing hydrogen on the right. We're seeing it here. And when we look, we're not seeing it in equation number two, but we're seeing it in equation number three, and we're seeing it on the left. So here, hydrogen again is a spectator species because it appears on opposite sides of the equations. 
and so it can be removed and so we have removed the, the hydrogen um oxygen not seen in equation number one but seen in equation number two and in equation number two um it is on the the left and it's also seen on the left in equation number three but because it appears on the same side it must not be eliminated it is not a spectator species spectator species are only those that are found on opposite sides right this is on the same side the left side of both equations and so this would not be eliminated all right and in the case of carbon dioxide it's only seen in equation two it's not seen in any, in any other equation and the same thing obtains a water it is found in equation three but we are not seeing it in any of the other equations and so it appears though as we have eliminated all the spectator species now let us write what now obtains on each side beginning with the left side so from equation one what we have remaining on the left side is the propane c3 h8 And from, from equation number two, what we have remaining on the left is just the three molecules of oxygen. And the same thing obtains in equation number three. We just have oxygen remaining, and in this case, it is two molecules of oxygen. And so we could put those together since they're referring to the same species. So three moles of oxygen from equation two and two moles of oxygen from equation number three. That's a total of five moles a combined number of five moles of O2 right from both equations and so this is what we'll have on the left hand side for the right hand side let us see what we have remaining for equation number one there's nothing remaining um, everything was eliminated for equation number one for equation number two, what we have remaining, um, three moles of carbon dioxide, so three CO2. And for equation number three, what we have remaining are four moles of water. So four H2O. Now, having added the three equations, what is clear is that we have obtained our desired equation, which is written in red. So if you look clearly at what is in red, it is the same as what we now have here after adding all three equations. So it means, therefore, that the addition of these three equations have given the desired equation and if that being the case the sum of the enthalpy values of those three equations must also be equal to the enthalpy value of the desired equation and so therefore minus not positive 104 plus three times minus 394 plus 4 times minus 242 will give us the enthalpy value of the desired equation and that works out to be minus 2046 kilojoules per mole. Thank you so much for listening. We have come to the end of the presentation. Thanks so much.